Released more than 12 years ago, the original Okami first arrived during the twilight years of PlayStation 2. It's a sprawling, open-ended action RPG fusing the Legend of Zelda with ancient Japanese history. At the time of its release, it was also one of the most ambitious and expensive games undertaken by publisher Capcom. It's a beautiful adventure and one Capcom has seen fit to re-release across three generations of consoles. And honestly, it still works. The visual aesthetic is timeless. It's one of those games that manages to hold up even when viewed through the lens of a modern 4K television. This week then, Okami finally arrives on Nintendo Switch. Boasting new features including touchscreen input and motion control, high resolution visuals and more, Okami for Switch promises to be an excellent port. So today we're going to examine this port while also taking a moment to look back at the evolution of Okami's presentation. From its original PS2 incarnation through its various conversions, every iteration of the game is covered. So let's get started. Clover Studio was a development group formed under Capcom, helmed by many of the people responsible for Beautiful Joe. The mission, develop new IPs and explore new genres. Backed by the talent of Shinji Mikami, Hideki Kamiya, Atsushi Inaba, and others, Clover produced some true classics during its short lifespan. While the studio no longer exists today, the spirit of Clover lives on through Platinum Games. During its run then, perhaps no Clover developed game is more ambitious than Okami. With an enormous pool of talent and money behind it, Okami released critical acclaim in 2006. It may not have ignited the sales charts, but it's widely considered a classic. It's a great game, but what stands out the most is its visual style. With Okami, Clover Studio pushed its cell shading techniques to the next level. But rather than mimicking the look of modern anime or manga, as was common at the time, Clover instead focused on replicating the style of Japanese sumie paintings. Inky black lines envelop geometric edges across the world, bleeding out across the image like ink on a page. A textured paper effect is applied to the scene, lending the game a tangible quality as if it were being drawn before the player. Objects such as trees and grass consist of beautiful flat paintings carefully crafted and placed into each scene. This is combined with a soft glow applied across the game world. It's hauntingly beautiful on original hardware with a look quite unlike anything else on the market even today. In its original form, Okami runs at 512 by 448 resolution, which looks nice on a CRT, but blow it up on a large flat panel and it begins to show its age. Since release, Capcom has released Okami across multiple platforms, including Wii, PlayStation 3, PlayStation 4, Xbox One, and now Switch. But this is no ordinary port. There are essentially three unique ports to discuss here. Let's begin with the first of them, the Wii version. Capcom decided to bring the game to Nintendo's very successful motion-controlled console, but faced some challenges along the way. You see, at this point, Clover Studio was no more, and the job was outsourced to Ready at Dawn, with assistance from Tosei, the go-to studio in Japan known for co-developing many a game. Lacking some of the source art and forced to reverse engineer the original code, however, the Wii version of Okami is lacking some of the visual flourishes found in the original PS2 release. The textured paper effect that was so prevalent in the PS2 release, for instance, is massively toned down here. Still, it did at least add the option to control the celestial brush using the Wii mode, which is one of its selling points since the brush plays a huge role in the game's mechanics. Years later, Okami received an excellent port on PlayStation 3, courtesy of Hexadrive, the very talented studio known for its expertise in converting games to new platforms. There's an air of mystery surrounding this port, however. When it was released, Hexadrive posted this blog detailing some of its improvements and techniques used to build the HD version of the game. Of note is this section. When translated, the text suggests that the game is rendered internally at 4K, then downscaled for display at 1080p. In other words, it's suggesting that super sampling is being used. If you look further into the piece, however, these images come to light suggesting that the game is really just 1080p with 4X MSAA. Thus, arguments have persisted for years. Is the game really rendering at a higher resolution internally? Does Okami use SSAA? 
Well, our best guess would be that the blog is describing multi-sampling anti-aliasing, or MSAA. You see, at its core, MSAA does share some similarities with SSAA in that geometry edges are basically super sampled, but it differs when it comes to pixel sampling, where there's just one sampled texture per pixel. It just so happens that MSAA is a perfect fit for the visual stylings of Okami and it appears remarkably crisp as a result. 1080p with 4x MSAA and 16x anisotropic filtering is nothing to sneeze at, and in fact, this version of Okami may actually feature the best image quality of any game on PlayStation 3. 1080p itself is a rare thing on the system, and utilizing MSAA on top of that pushes it to the upper echelon. Beyond that, efforts were poured into improving the quality of the core assets. The game's textures were updated across the board, but with more than 13,000 individual assets to address, doing everything by hand would have been prohibitively expensive and time-consuming for a remaster. Thus, the team employed a custom algorithm based on super-resolution technology, which can essentially analyze and upscale an image intelligently while giving the impression of added detail. At least, that's the gist of it. Due to the painterly nature of the artwork, however, it works really well in Okami. The mix of handcrafted and algorithmically enhanced artwork greatly enhances the visual quality of the game. Until late last year then, this was the best way to experience Okami. But now, a further enhanced version of the game is available. Initially released on Xbox One, PlayStation 4, and the PC back in late 2017, this updated port is now available on Nintendo Switch as well, and looking at all four of these versions together, this is the best version of Okami yet. Based on Hexadrive's PS3 port, this new conversion seems to have been handled by Buzz and Vantayan Systems. It's difficult to find out exactly how this port was made, but based on the game's credits, we can kinda guess. Either way, all the benefits of the PS3 version are present and accounted for improved textures, exceptional image quality, and perhaps the greatest feature of all, the option to skip through lengthy dialogue sequences. You see, there's a lot of text in Okami, and it can become rather tiresome at points when Isun stops you at every corner. While it's true that this feature was initially made available in the Wii version, it was not present in the PlayStation 3 port, so it's nice to see it return in the latest definitive edition of Okami. So beyond that, what are the differences here? Well, at its core, the game operates at native 4K on both PS4 Pro and Xbox One X, while the base systems offer 1080p output instead. Naturally, you can achieve this on the PC version as well. The Switch version then runs at a full 1080p while docked, and native 720p in portable mode. In all cases, it seems to use MSAA just like the PS3 version, meaning that image quality is virtually flawless, and on PS4 Pro, Xbox One, and the PC, Native 4K is finally a reality, but with the Switch version releasing this week, many are likely wondering just how it stacks up. Is it worth checking out on the Switch? Well, as suggested, it offers a significant visual improvement over the PS2 original, just as we saw in the initial HD version on PlayStation 3. And if we compare it to that PS3 remaster, well, it looks nearly identical. I say nearly as the aspect ratio has been slightly modified in this new version. Take a look, this is the game on PlayStation 3, right? And this is the Switch version. See the difference? As with other versions, you also have the option to view the game in its original 4x3 aspect ratio, as well as adjust other settings like the intensity of the paper filter. Like on PlayStation 3, the Switch version also offers image quality exceeding basically any other game on the system thus far. And this is true in portable mode as well, it looks simply phenomenal. And hey, thanks to our new portable capture switch, it's actually possible to observe these details running in real time. And clearly, as you can see, it holds up beautifully, even against the docked version. Beyond visual quality, the Switch version also adds a couple new input options. When playing in portable mode, for instance, it's possible to use the touch screen to manipulate the celestial brush. This is far and away the best implementation to date. I always felt that manipulating the brush in other versions of the game was a little fiddly, but here you have a level of precision that just feels great to use. The fact that you can simply touch the screen at any time to initiate brush mode is even better. It's a great addition for portable play. 
While docked, then you can opt for a more traditional analog stick driven interface or use one of the Joy-Con's gyro sensors to move your brush around, kinda like the original Wii release. Unfortunately, since it's no longer IR based, the precision is reduced comparatively. It's pretty fun to use, but often difficult to draw a perfect line. In this scene, for instance, you're asked to just cross out a name on this list. And it took several tries for the game to register my feeble attempts at gyro drawing. With that in mind, I prefer using the Pro Controller. So this latest version of Okami preserves the look and feel of the original PS2 title perfectly while delivering sharper visuals on an HD TV, but how does it actually run on the Switch? Well, in general, it's nearly perfect, delivering a stable 30 frames per second during gameplay. I say nearly as I did observe these minor hitches and skips during gameplay that manifest as either a single missed frame or a frame ordering problem where one frame persists for longer than the next, which is basically bad frame pacing. Thankfully, this is an uncommon occurrence and does not generally impact the experience in any significant way. And I say that as someone who is typically bothered by this issue. The same is true of portable mode, which delivers performance on par with the docked experience, 30 FPS with occasional little skips here and there. Of course, we would have loved to have seen Okami at 60 frames per second, but it seems that this is one case where it's not really feasible. Modders have attempted to solve this on the PC side of things, but apparently it breaks physics, can cause crashes, and results in situations where the player can become stuck. So basically 60 FPS is currently off the table in this remaster version of the game. And how about the other versions? Well, I did get a chance to test the game on Xbox One X and PlayStation 4 Pro, and both of them deliver a rock solid 30 frames per second with none of the skips or hitches present in the Switch version, at least in the areas that I tested. This is a massive game after all, and capturing every single version of the game for this particular report has proven rather time consuming to say the least. So technically speaking then, if you're looking for the absolute best place to play the game, it's clear that the Xbox One X, PlayStation 4 Pro, and PC deliver the best version of the game. But really, you can't go wrong with any of the HD versions. Well, except maybe the Wii port. So thinking about that, let's step back briefly and review our findings in this video. The PS2 original, it's still lovely, but the low resolution makes it best suited to a proper CRT, so it's probably not the best way to play. The Wii version then is missing some of the visual details and is my least favorite version due to the controls, but it does at least offer the dialogue skip option. The PS3 version then is perhaps the most technically impressive of the bunch, delivering native 1080p with 4x MSAA and 16x anisotropic filtering on a PlayStation 3 is quite a feat. It's only really let down by the noticeable screen tearing in certain scenes and the lack of dialogue skipping. Then of course there is the most recent incarnation, which is great across every single platform. While the 4K twins offer the best console experience, image quality is good enough across the board that I'd be happy with any of them. If you've never played Okami before and are interested in the game, pick up any one of these versions and be happy. If you value the sharpest image quality, of course, go for Xbox One X or PS4 Pro, or well, PC. Of course, this also begs the question, is Okami still worth playing today? Well, I think so. It's been more than a decade since I've properly played the game, and while I've only replayed the first couple of hours for this video, several times over I might add for capture, I still find it highly captivating. It's a very relaxing game and still beautiful to boot. Sure, it has its flaws and the dialogue kind of goes on a bit much, but I'd still highly recommend it. It's just such a unique experience. But that's it for the moment. If you enjoyed this journey through the various incarnations of Okami, be sure to let us know by liking, subscribing to our channel, ringing the bell up there because you know YouTube, and follow us over on Twitter. And until next time, stay retro, because this was basically a mini DF retro.